In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you guys how to make a logo spinning effect based on user scroll. So as you can see in this first example website, slowtalk.us, we can see that the logo is on the top left hand side. And as I scroll down the page, we can see that the icon is actually spinning based on my scroll. Another example website is everteam.com.au. Very same principle. As I scroll down the page, you can see the icon of the triangle is spinning as I scroll the page. So let's go ahead and build this in Webflow. So the first thing you want to do is you want to just make sure whatever logo file you have, you want to separate it into two different assets. So what do I mean by this? Typically with a logo, you'll just export it as the one asset. But what you want to do is you want to separate the assets into two, three, four, ten parts, uh, depending on your logo complexity. But in this example, I want this icon to spin around as, the, as I scroll down the page. So instead of exporting it as one individual file, I want to separate the logo word as well as the icon on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and import this into Webflow. And once that's done, you can see that I've imported both the icon and the logo text rather than just both the logo and the icon, as you can see here, into two separate files, we can get started. So right now on my page, I just have a, a nav bar followed by some content and a typical footer. Uh, if you guys are curious how I built this, it's actually built using the predefined layouts in Webflow. I just dragged them in there for this example website. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your nav bar is essentially stuck to the top of the page. Otherwise, you can't really see the logo spinning if it's not actually stuck on top of the page. So if I scroll down, you can see the nav bar is not sticking to the top. That's because it's currently positioned to static. So let's go ahead and change this to sticky. We also need to put a top margin of zero pixels, which tells Webflow that we want the nav to stick zero pixels to the top of the screen. So as you can see, when I scroll down, uh, everything is working, but you may notice there's some sort of bugs. And that's because we haven't added a background color. Let's go ahead and do that, change it to a white. And you may also notice that when I scroll down, certain elements are actually on top of the nav bar. And this is because of layering in web design or web development. This is referred to as Z index. So what we can do is we can actually go into the nav bar and change the Z index from auto to something very, very high. So let's just put 9,000. And now if I scroll down the page, you can see everything is working. So just to recap, Z index is essentially layering. The higher the number will result in that appearing in front of a lowered number Z index. So think about Photoshop and layers. When you put a layer on top of something, it would appear first. Same principle with Z index in regards to the highest number. Next step we want to do is we want to actually put our logo inside the nav bar. Let's go ahead and do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete this logo. And I just have a link block right here, which essentially allows us to link the logo. But I'm going to go ahead and just add an image. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the image. I'm going to add my logo icon first. Give it a class of logo dash icon. And give it a height, let's just say 80 pixels. Uh, maybe a bit smaller, maybe 70. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and add another image inside that link block. And I'm going to add the logo text in my case. And it will be very tempting to use the exact same class logo dash icon that we just created for this logo. But it's better to create a unique class simply because when we animate this, we don't want to use the same classes as we only want this logo icon to spin and not the logo itself. So what we can do actually is we can actually copy this class paste it in here and we can actually just click on the drop down and click duplicate class and then just give it a new name so it's unique so we can, for this example i'll type in logo text and perhaps the text is a bit too big so maybe i'll just reduce it to 42 pixels on height maybe 32 pixels and then i would also give it a margin on the left of 18 pixels and that is looking a lot better so now that is done, we have our logo all set up. We can go ahead and start to animate the spin of this logo icon. So in order to do this, we want the spin to essentially be relative to the body. So as we scroll down the body, we want the logo to spin. So let's go ahead and select the body, hit the lightning bolt icon or interactions, click new 
page trigger and you want to click on to while page is scrolling and want to create a new animation hit plus and just type in logo spinning now that's done we want to go ahead and select the logo icon hit the plus at the zero percent hit rotate so right here and you'll notice that it automatically created another one at 100 percent this is very normal and we want to go ahead and just change this from selected element to class that way it affects uh, the class rather than the specific one element and from here what we can do is we can set the top at zero percent at a z index rotation so right here on the bottom right to zero pixels so right here at the bottom zero pixels or zero degrees in this case and at the very bottom we want to rotate it uh, a couple of times so this really depends on how long your page is my page isn't that long so perhaps i only need to rotate it one time which is 360 degrees but let's just say you have a very very long page or you want the spinning effect to be like a lot you can actually times this by two so by timesing it to two it's 720 degrees and that way it will spin twice when you scroll from the top to the bottom of the page so feel free to just play around with the numbers you can also go ahead and add some sort of easing to the spinning effect i'm not going to do that i'm going to hit save and then from here you can also apply some smoothing so a smoothing will just smooth out the spinning effect so again play around with these numbers perhaps i'll just add it to 75 percent and now everything is done so now if i press the preview button right here you can see if i'm scrolling down the website the logo actually spins which is really really cool um, and you'll notice that this is fully responsive in every single breakpoint let's just say in mobile if i scroll down it spins um, of course the logo is a bit too big so we can obviously jump in and just reduce the sizing of everything perhaps to 16 pixels and perhaps to 42 pixels and just reducing the margin on the left to like four pixels or eight pixels um, you can see that it is all working properly so that is how you do a logo spinning effect there is one thing to denote in regards to this is typically with nav bars what we will do is we'll actually put it into a component so we can actually type in nav bar new and then let's just say you create a new page and we'll call it new page test and in this new page, you'll go ahead and you'll drag your navbar component that you just created. And let's just put in some dummy content. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag a layout. And I'm just gonna copy this a couple of times so we can see that they scroll on the page. So you'll notice once I hit preview that it actually doesn't work on a new page. And the reason why is we haven't actually triggered the interaction. So what we need to do and what we need to make sure of is every single page we want this spinning logo to happen is we wanna hit the body and then go to page trigger and click while page is scrolling and you want to go ahead and click play it start animation and you want to go ahead and click onto the logo spinning animation that we just created and now if you look at it it is now working so just keep that in mind you're gonna to have to add this manually to every single page uh, but hopefully you guys found this useful i think this spinning effect is really really cool um, it's very unique because typically in the logo it's just static and it doesn't really interact with the website um, so yeah, definitely add this to your next project if applicable, or you know, you can play around with this spinning effect somewhere else on the page, not necessarily the logo. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace.